Hey, what's up, guys? GK here. By the end of this video, you're going to see how I have achieved this using the cloud scheduler. Before I go into the details of implementation, like how I have done this whole thing using cloud scheduler and cloud function, let's look at the common scenarios where you can use this tutorial. For example, if somebody would ask you in, a, in an exam or in an interview, question would be, you are supposed to schedule stop and start off your compute engine instances this is a common scenario in the companies because in companies you have uh, people working in different uh, locations and you want to save money by stopping the instances so how would you achieve that what we have to do in these scenarios is we have to use another service like called google cloud functions that's going to act as a glue for talking to multiple you know gcp services for instance, in, in the first scenario, if I have to stop and start GC instances, I would schedule the job for IST or, you know, for EST based on the time zone. And then that job will call the cloud function. The cloud function will have the logic talking to the APIs of uh, compute engine and starting and stopping and stuff. So the whole logic will be in cloud function. So the scheduler will call the cloud function HTTP endpoint. And then the cloud function will trigger the APIs of GCE and shut down the instance or start the instance or stop the instance. So that's how you can achieve the first scenario. The second scenario is something that we are going to discuss in this video. And as I've said, you can use multiple APIs. You can schedule like uh, backups or anything using cloud functions because you can write the logic. But basically, in this scenario, in the demo that we're going to see today, is I'm going to use cloud scheduler and call the cloud function in a secure way not allowing cloud function to be accessed from outside in a secure way calling the cloud function and the cloud function will have the logic of creating the backups or rather copying the blobs in a gcs bucket all right so let's go into the demo as always start with your console select your project so once you have selected your project the next thing what we want to do is we want to create the cloud function Go to cloud functions so i already have copy objects function and let me go through a very high level of what this actually does so basically this whole code i'm going to give the link in the description as well to my github page now if you look at the code it's very simple i have a bucket gk12345 and i have a um text i mean i have a blob object in that gk.txt the idea is that i want to create multiple copies of gk.txt in the same bucket you can also send those copies to multiple buckets but i'm going to use this to just do it in the same bucket and then um, since i have to do it multiple times and i have to schedule it for every minute i'm going to add date uh, timestamp as a variable here so that it will be appended with the time stamp you know whenever it's getting created that's the logic and if i have to execute it you know i would go to the testing and i'm going to show you what's going to happen so test this function by running it all right so we got the output as okay now i'm gonna go to cloud storage And select the bucket you can see that a new object got created by from uh, gk.txt so this is what we are going to do so i'm going to delete this for the sake of you know uh, to make it easy for you when i'm doing it from the cloud scheduler basically now thing is that i have tested my function it is working fine it is able to copy the object and you know copy it into a same bucket the next thing that you want to do as part of this tutorial is we want to trigger this right trigger this cloud function using cloud scheduler so as you all know you can expose the code or expose the function using uh, http endpoint uh, in cloud functions now i'm going to copy this http endpoint and go to the cloud scheduler
you don't know about cloud scheduler go back to my video on that you know i have made it very easy for you all to understand that so here i'm going to create copy blobs or something like that scheduler and the description is to backup of the existing blob every minute and frequency is based on cron so i can give star star which is going to be every minute and time zone would be where i am currently which is in edt so united states new york this part is a little frustrating because you know as soon as i would hit edt it should have displayed edt but it sometimes doesn't do that um, little frustrating to select time zone here is new york new york new york right new york the target is going to be http right so http url here which is the endpoint of the cloud function and since we are not going to post anything to that function we're just calling it so it's going to be get create now when i do run now you can see it failed and you can go to the logs and see why it failed so load newer logs the reason for that is because i do not have permission basically the cloud scheduler do not have permission to invoke the function i'm going to show you how to do that go back to your cloud functions so let me do it do that in a new tab cloud functions here on the right side if you don't have this panel click on show info panel and click on the function so one thing that you want to make sure is you should have the right service account to call this function where you can you know use in cloud scheduler or you have to make this function available for everybody to call so for instance if i have to let everybody like you know you, even you can access this function i can say all users so all i have to do is i have to add member all users and the role is going to be cloud function invoke save this is going to make the function available for public access meaning anybody from internet can access this function which is not what we want to uh, ideally do because you know this function should be available only for us internally to your employees and you who want to access this i would cancel this but i'm just showing you how you can make it work if you do this you know cloud scheduler can obviously call this function it's all good uh, that will make it work but i'm not going to do that this is one way of fixing that issue the other way is actually going and creating a service account that would help you to use the service account so let me go to im section here and again i have a excellent video on service account you can go back to my videos and look into the service account part if you don't know about service accounts and stuff now what we have to do is we have to create a, a service account like here i'm going to create it as cf invoke cloud function invoker create and here permission would be the same thing cloud function invoke new you don't have to create any key here because i'm not going to do it from outside of uh, gcp i'm going to do done and here we have the permissions copy this service account and uh, when you add the member here add this permission Think it did not got refreshed yet but let me refresh this 
copy object select the function again now you can see i have cf invoke present here which means this service account uh, i mean this function can be executed by this service account right now let's go back to the scheduler and now we're going to click on the scheduler and click on edit and instead of authentication header none i would use oidc token one beauty of google cloud is that we don't have to explicitly handle authentication between the google cloud services so when i do add oidc token and if i put the service account here google you know itself will take care of the authentication meaning that it will create the token using the service account key and it will send the token to the cloud function and cloud function inherently has that capability of you know authenticating the token and allowing this uh, you know this service account to be executed so that's the good part of it so you don't have to explicitly like write a code in your cloud functions to handle this tokens and stuff now when i click on edit um, update so one possible bug that i found is after you go to the cloud function after you have created the cloud schedule job you know if you click on edit and if you change the auth header to oidc token and if the service account here it it won't allow you to do that so if you are not able to edit you know what you can do is you can just recreate a new one because i had the same issue so i created a new one and i have put the cf invoke service account here now when i run this it is successful and now if i go to the cloud storage and cloud storage you would see the objects are getting created so it's going to be created every minute as long as the scheduler is running so that's about the tutorial and i have demonstrated to you how we can use cloud scheduler and use cloud functions and achieve awesome things using uh, these two and you can automate lot of stuff by using cloud functions and you can even write simple python functions i hope this tutorial is clear and now you can try cloud scheduler and integrate with cloud functions securely using oidc token and let me know if you have any questions on this thank you so much for watching if you like this video give it a like and subscribe to my channel